Good evening and welcome back to Telltale Books. This video I'm going to talk about another new author series. A whole series starting at, starting with the first published piece, trying to go through them all. Um, this author didn't write a whole lot, but he made a big impact with what he did write. Um, one of his stories tends to be anthologized all the time and is often pointed to as the quintessential science fiction story. The author is Tom Godwin. That story is The Cold Equations, but this video is about his first story, The Gulf Between. The Gulf Between was published in Astounding Stories under John W. Campbell in October of 1953. I'm going to put up the artwork for the cover of that issue because a lot of people will recognize it, but you won't realize that it isn't, isn't really what you think. The illustration was done for the cover of the October 1953 issue to illustrate the gulf between and was painted by the great Frank Kelly Fraze. He was fairly early in his career, but this was one of his greatest works ever. But not much of anybody saw it because it was on the cover of a science fiction magazine in 1953. So only science fiction fans saw it and appreciated it. But apparently, somebody in the group Queen saw it and appreciated it. And they asked Frank Kelly Fraze to paint a new version of it for the cover of their album, News of the World where the robot is holding the members of the band. And that made the painting instantly super famous and got a lot of work for Frank Kelly Fraze, although he was he is one of the he was one of the busiest illustrators in science fiction from when he started in the early nineteen fifties all the way through to his death in the nineteen nineties. His illustrations were everywhere. A lot of covers of dog books, a lot of covers of Astounding, a lot of covers of a lot of other magazines, Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction, Galaxy If, paperback books, a lot of Ace books, a lot of Lancer books, or Laser books, I mean, in the 1970s. The Laser series of books had Frank Kelly Frey's covers and he was definitely one of the best science fiction illustrators. So anyway, his illustration was originally for The Gulf Between by Tom Godwin. The Gulf Between is a novelette, no longer than a short story. And it seems like Godwin did prefer, he didn't write many novels, but he did seem to prefer stories that were longer than a short story. He wrote a lot of novelettes. So what is it about? Well, try to do this without spoiling it, or at least without spoiling it too much. The story starts with a guy, it, it starts in the Korean War. And this one guy, he's a platoon leader, He's been ordered to take a hill. And he knows it's pretty much a suicide mission. But the order is coming from his superior, who is a guy that he knew, they knew each other since they were little kids. But they have different ideas about how to lead people. Um, the superior... He feels that all the troops are there to do whatever he says without question. And if they die, they die. They are just cogs in a machine. They are to be used. And his friend disagrees with that. Well, but his friend follows orders, takes a platoon up to charge the hill and try and take it. They get shot down. Most of the platoon dies, his friend lives, and he becomes a computer and robotics scientist and works for a doctor who is a genius scientist. And together they develop kind of like an AI computer, computer brain that 
they can and they build a robot with it. In the meantime, his friend is the his superior from the army. They're not really friends anymore. He go he uh, decides to jump to the other side. There's a dictator that is leading um, both Russia and Asia. And this guy decides to spy for that dictator, which eventually leads him to get a powerful position in that di dictator's police force. And eventually he gets high enough up that he comes back. Now, in the meantime, his friend, the computer genius, and the, do and the doctor, the other computer genius, they develop these brains and they're developing a spaceship with um, very advanced weaponry, um, light ray, atomic disruptor type weaponry. And they want to take that up into space because then up there, this thing can easily knock out any forces coming over from this um, Russo-Asian dictator's bases to in invade the U.S. Well, of course, the guy that defected, he's still in charge of a network of spies, and his spies learn of this thing, and they, they develop a plan to capture it. And so he comes to the U.S. and invades the base where the spaceship is being developed and the robot is at and all the brains are, are there, computer brains are there. <clears throat> he does this with the purpose of stealing them so that his side can win the war. I'm going to stop there because... The only thing more I could talk about with this sto story would totally spoil it. I don't feel this story is very well known despite its incredibly famous cover and despite having been the first story by an author that has become identified with the quintessential science fiction story. Um, even so, I don't think a lot of people remember this story today, and I don't think a lot of people today are reading it, which is a shame because the story holds a very interesting idea about computers and society and how, com how computer brains are different from human minds. For all of their capabilities, for all the powers, and for all the advanced programming they're doing with what they call AI today, AI is still just a machine. It's not intelligent. It's not self-aware. It is not going to replace us because it's still just ones and zeros when you come right down to it. It's still just on and off, yes and no, right and wrong. And it still operates by taking data input into it, performing algorithms, and producing a result. The human mind is so much more subtle than that. Not saying that, that computers and robots and AI can't someday advance to that state, but let's face it, they are still just machines running algorithms. And so as such... You have to be careful what you tell it to do because, and this is what the one guy really loves about the robot they built, is that this robot does exactly what you tell it to do. But it does exactly what you tell it to do. You know, subtleties of, and, and I do feel that programmers today are getting around this problem already, but... In the story, subtleties of language, like go turn on the radio. That's the classic one. 
what does that mean? Does it mean to turn the power button on so that the radio operates? Or does it mean to stand on the radio and turn around? <laughs> you know, um, you have with a machine, you have to be very explicit in your instructions or you're not going to get the results you want because the machine does not distinguish between those things. It does exactly what you tell it to do and nothing more, nothing less. It does exactly 100% what you tell it to do. And this, this military commander that, that defected, he loves an idea. He loves the whole, the idea of having a, a whole robot army that just does exactly what orders you give it. But his friend understands that we've gotten where we are at because we can do so much more than that. And even, even if you... Even if you have a huge set of data, like AI today has access to the whole internet, which is pretty much the sum total of human knowledge. But here's the thing with that. All of that data was created, invented, discovered, formulated by human minds and could not have been done by machine. Now that we have that data, you can feed it into a machine and machines can, can give you output from it. But those machines can't move us forward the way we have always moved forward in the past. And that's what makes this story startlingly interesting and important for all of its... Um, well, the characters are pretty well done and... S the beginning especially is is very gritty it, it's korean war it's you know it's um intelligent and it kind of starts out giving you the expectation that you're in for something a lot more literate than what you normally would get out of astounding at that time but then you leave the korean war and you go into a story that's more traditional astounding um and with a, a relationship going on between the scientist and his assist, his woman assistant, which in 1953, not much of anybody would have thought much about it. They probably people would have laughed, but today it seems inappropriate and even cringeworthy. Uh, at the very least, it's just not very funny. It was meant to be, but it's not. It's it's not very good so there are some rough edges to this story and it's it's a it's another example of one of these classic science fiction stories from from the pages of astounding where the author is dealing with this really great idea this really great subject and he's got this great plot and situation and then just doesn't do enough with it just stops short of making this thing the masterpiece, the great literature that it could be. Um, and instead it feels more like a 1950s science fiction film. But I still want to give this top tail status because it's so close to what it could, you know, it. it's so close, the potential is so obvious a writer today could have taken the story and run with it and made something masterful with it. And that's why I just feel it has to have top tail status because it, it did um, fall just short and only failed because of the time and place that it was written and published. Okay, so The Gulf Between, that's Tom Godwin's first story. His second story in the December 1953 issue of Astounding is called Mother of Invention. And it, it again is a, a longer piece of no, uh, novelette. 
and I will be coming back with that on Tom Godwin's birthday, which is coming up soon, only in a couple weeks. So until then, like us and subscribe to us. Leave your comments. Have you ever read The Gulf Between? What do you think? And come on back and see more. Tom Godwin, Isaac Gasmuff, Harlan Ellison, and all the other authors that I'm getting so deep into. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.